to touch on what you said about the nuclear power real quick because it's funny enough i was just listening to uh the economist who was they were doing a report on nuclear power plants um and basically they were kind of saying that so for example right now in britain they are building new power plants and they're creating a process of kind of like this copy and paste where they're developing them in a way where they're copying the methodology. So when they make another one, it's faster. And then they make another one, they learn from that and it's faster. And they're also applying this to make um, like mini nuclear plants now uh, so that they can kind of implement them uh, a little, uh, how do you say, like more variety or further out. I'm sorry, that didn't make. Yeah, I've read that before. <laughs> they're like they're like little they're like little like micro reactors almost or something. Yeah. You know, like I, I heard, but it's almost like kind of what they use in like nuclear submarines. They're just a very small, yeah, there you kind go. of like you know micro grid power. Right. You know, which is which is pretty. You know, you don't it, like you know nuclear power is one of those things that it's you know, become very political, you know, just like pretty much almost everything has now. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's, you know, you're not burning fossil fuels, you know, but it is, you do have like an inherent danger with nuclear power because of, you know, of what it is. But, you know, if they could find a way, because nuclear, nuclear power plants use nuclear fission, Mm -hmm. which isn't sustainable um i know they have been working on trying to develop like nuclear fusion which is sustainable for i don't know probably the last 50 years trying to develop a way to make that into a power plant um but yeah i mean well, it's it's going to be interesting how they're going to try to grow the grid to support you know all of all the needed power now you're going to you know need for all the electric vehicles and stuff it's well, also interesting to see how that's going to get passed on to the consumer yeah. um, with all the increased infrastructure costs how that's going to trickle down actually you know fun, so one of the things they were talking about um well actually to touch on your point about the fission they actually some of the mini reactors they said they can build it with a cooling system uh of natural water. So what they do is they kind of submerge the plant in a pond and they have, or a pond or bigger body of water. And then their cooling system has the water continually run through and cool the rods. And if, as a safety measure, if that goes awry, basically uh, a system engages that floods it with the surrounding water. So it kind of makes it a little easier to uh, avoid a catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and then as far as the grid thing, they were also saying one idea that they had, uh, which I don't know how popular this would be, but they can start adding the cost of building these plants into your utilities. So you would have like part of the risk would go to the companies that are building them and then some of the income for it would come from taxes and utility customers so that they could kind of plan for the future of installing these. So kind of a way to mitigate costs. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was really interesting too, what you had to say uh, about the noise of vehicles. Yeah. I never thought about that. And I tell you, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... I can't so tell next you time you time next time you're buying an electric one, go ahead and listen to when it gets slow because it's hilarious sounding. <laughs> that seems funny because I, I could have sworn I almost got hit by a Tesla the other day. Like in the parking <laughs> lot, the thing was like creeping around the corner at me. If I didn't hear like the tires on the pavement, mm -hmm. yeah, was, they they are quiet. It is. I never drove one. I would, like I would love to drive one just to see what it's like because you know you're not. You're not shifting gears when you, you know, go to a higher speed and everything. It's just like, it's got to be completely weird to be in it. But My well, I, sister's well. boyfriend has one and I, it is smooth, <laughs> yeah. but it, it uses so much of its battery 
when you try to like accelerate like that so he's constantly having to go to like a Chili's parking lot to freaking charge it (laughs) and I just he was like you should get one when I was getting a new car and I was like I see what you have to do I don't want to do that (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. I well I work for Carvana and um we had a Tesla come through I got to drive out a little bit and I think I did like uh I guess an hour and a half drive and it probably dropped about 10, 15% on that drive. Yeah. It was very smooth. It was very smooth, very fun. But you, I, I can only imagine how uh, how often you have to charge it. And if you yes. live in like an apartment or something, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. Like you can't, there's nowhere to plug that in. Yeah, so we have, um, at my work, we have, like we're supposed to go, I think it's like 75% electric by like 2035 or something. You know, they put a goal out, but um, they have like three charging ports per like office. And they they start they started buying like all these Nissan Leaf or like little Chevy Bolt, like little mm-hmm. tiny SUVs for like the supervisors and everything. But now they all fight over who's going to get these three little charging ports. <laughs> and it's funny because like, hey, we work for the electric company. We can just, you know, put more in. Yeah. but um no no that's, that's that's funny because of you know low demand and everything else it's you know it's it's definitely a, a issue especially in the future so it'll be it'll be uh interesting to see what happens well like you said even with costs some of the research i was doing uh for the fleet vehicles for example uh the batteries like the lithium ion batteries are such that ideally would be the ones that have greater charge are also the most expensive and yeah. so that just feels to the cost um as well as just driving times are so everything's so much of a variable it is yeah i know like hydrogen batteries also yeah have a lot of capacity but nobody wants to drive around with hydrogen in their car. Yeah, I was, <laughs> if i had a little more time i was gonna mention hydrogen stuff uh hydrogen batteries in here because i know i or i thought there was a few out in california um and i know there's a few in like sweden or the netherlands area and they don't seem to have any problems that i forgot no i don't yeah i think i think they are really good at containing it i don't think you would really have problems i think where they have issues is, is like passing it through i don't know either department of transportation or whatever the heck it could be you know i don't you know how how that could be i guess with any regulation um it's like you said with the nuclear power plants there's kind of this stigma right of danger Mm -hmm. to it and that kind of hurts local support which is really what it takes to implement something so vast you know what i mean that's change like that yeah absolutely Oh, well, hey, it was, uh, I guess, should we end it? What do you guys, uh, what are we on? We're on like, we're, oh, we're almost like a half hour. Yeah. We could yeah. Good. I think we're good. Yeah. Well, hey, it was, uh, it's good talking to you guys. It's nice meeting you. Hopefully this does, uh, you know, I see it's still obviously recording, but hopefully it definitely saves and <laughs> I'll definitely track it down and get it to you guys as soon as I can. So that sounds um, great. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for recording it and setting this up. Absolutely.